how many of you are ready? Oh, uh, wait a minute, Home, what's that? I've got a report coming in right now from, uh, from WHO. Uh, yep, that's right, um, WHO uh, is, is sending me a report. Um, they're confirming right now, I interrupt this broadcast right now and stream, uh, to just let you know that they're saying that the, the current uh, affairs are that everybody's going to die. That's right. Every, they're saying that this is going to spread, and it's, it's all over the place. Everybody's going to die. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, and just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes judgment, listen, we're all going to die. But not today, right? So uh, that scripture goes on to say, so also Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins for many people. Come on. You know, yes, it's, it's all about whose report are you going to believe? Right? Whose report are you going to believe here today? Are you going to believe all the conflicting things? My daughter, um, at her, her, her work, she works at a Christian college. And, uh, you know, I've been, we've been praying for her job. A lot of athletic departments in colleges are shutting down right now. Uh, they're saying, uh, you know, they have physicians on site, and they just went to a large uh, conference for um, a, a physician's conference. And, and they're saying that this whole COVID-19 thing isn't over, and that, that they're saying that, um, that they're closing down many athletic departments in preparation for that, and that there's going to be, you know, it's going to travel through the southern hemisphere and may come back again. And, and there's all kinds of reports coming out again that that are saying that um, they're saying that you know every flu season that this could be our new normal there's going to be all kinds of reports you know that that, that go around but uh, there's an old Ron Canoli song that says whose report will you believe I will believe the report of the Lord who says I am healed who says I am free who says I am delivered who says I am an overcomer in Christ that I can do all things in Christ greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world that's what I'm the report that I'm choosing to believe here that I'm not going to let you know our current circumstances limit what I'll try for the Lord and what we'll do for Jesus Christ come on it, it's all about whose report you're going to believe but today I actually titled this message who report so just just so you know um, you know, that was just a little interruption, you know, that there was a preface to the, to the ongoing book of Acts that we're doing. And as we look at the book of Acts right now, I just want to pick it up in Acts chapter 21 in verse 17 to 19. And it says, when we arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers and sisters received us warmly. And the next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James and all the elders who were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail. Somebody say reported in detail. Right there in your living room. I don't care if you're there in front of your TV. Say, say it with me. Reported in detail. Reported in detail. What God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, right now, Jesus, for your great love, Lord God, and that we can give you a good report about our, uh, the way that you've been moving in our lives. Just like the Apostle Paul, Lord God, when he finally got to Jerusalem, Lord, he'd been heading to Jerusalem all this time, led by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem, warned about what would happen to him when he got there, Lord God. And as he came and, and presented himself before his elders, before the elders of the church, he gave a report of all that God had been doing amongst the Gentiles. Help us to have a good report, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. And amen. Listen, we're hearing all kinds of reports all over the all over the world right now of things that are going on and, and people are speculating and, and you know talking about the end times like I've never heard before. There's reports of you know uh, locust plagues and reports of, of Israel uh, you know uh, trying to rebuild the temple and you know this deal of the century and peace you know in the Middle East and, and all kinds of reports that are going on. And here in how many of you know that reporting Reporting is like super important. It's a huge part of my job. I'm a software engineer by day, and a lot of what I do is reporting. Not only reporting like the financial reports, you know, and, and the kind of things that, you know, you think of when you think of a report, but I report to my boss every day and I give him a, a detail of what I've been doing, a, a detail of what's been going on in my work. We, we have a stand-up meeting called a sprint or a scrum, scrum meeting every day, and uh, we use it through JIRA, and, and we give an account for what we've been doing, our progress uh, that, that, that's been happening. And that's what we see Paul doing here is that he is, that he is giving a report to the elders of Jerusalem, all that God had been doing through the Gentile um, uh, work that he had been doing on his three missionary journeys, just finished the three missionary journeys. And now the Holy Spirit has him coming back to Jerusalem. Well, like reporting again, it's like, it's, 
it's it's such a huge part of, of everything we just had a board of trustees meetings the other day and oh my gosh like we went through financial reports and budget to actual reports you know our our cash balance we did our we we had to present a report you know based on you know what we thought our budget was going to look like so that's the importance of it is that review of actual historical data is key to realistic forecasting so if we're going to see where we're going we can take an account of where we've been and Paul was doing just that. He, he came, and the first thing when he got to Jerusalem is he reported to the, the elders, and then he gave a report of how everything was going. You see, recounting past performance sets the stage for what comes next. God always expects that out of his people, is to give an account. One day we'll all die, and we will all give an answer for the things that we've done and said in this life. How we've used our time, the things that he's asked us to do. Have we been faithful stewards of the little things so that we can be trusted with many things? Come on. So here, I would just want to give a definition for report. This re word report that he reported in detail in the Greek is a word exegemi. And it's where we get our word exegesis. It means a critical explanation or interpretation of a text or to draw out a narrative or to unfold a teaching or to recount or rehearse events. And so that's exactly what Paul was doing in this case. It was giving a report to his chain of command Huh? That's also another definition of reporting is that like there's a chain of command. I'm reporting to those who I give an account to. All of us at some point, you know, work for somebody. We're all going to serve somebody and we all do give a report. Someplace. How many of you people, you know, report to somebody at work and, and maybe have to deal with reports? You understand then how important that those things are. It's where we get organizational charts and, and everything around that. So when Paul got to Jerusalem, his first job was to report to the elders and then give an accurate report of what God was doing. Come on. So here's, we're going to go on and read on in, about Paul's report in Acts chapter 21, verse 20 to 25. Verse 20 says this. When they heard this, they praised God. And then they said to Paul, you see, brother, how many thousands of Jews had believed, and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you are teaching that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to the, our customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you've come, so do what we tell you. These are four men with us who have made, made a vow. Am I still, are you still with me here? Who have made a vow, take these men, join their purification rites, and pay their expenses so that they will have their so they can have their heads shaved, and then everyone will know that there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food, sacrifice to idols, and from blood, and from meat strangled to animals, and from sexual immorality. So James and the elders praised God when they heard Paul's report. But then there's a big but right there. It's like, as Paul's giving this account of all the thousands of people that have come to Christ, all the churches that have been planted all throughout the, the region of Macedonia and Turkey and, and all these areas and Ephesus and Corinth and Galatia and, you know, everywhere that, that he had gone, he, they, you know, they praised God and what God was doing. Then they say, but... They start talking about the negative reports that they received themselves about Paul. The thousands of non-Jewish believers, or the, I mean the new Jewish believers, couldn't reconcile that a Gentile could be saved without circumcision. So it's going to be one of those kind of meetings, huh? <laughs> we get it, go in to give it a report to our boss and, and everything is going great and then all of a sudden he drops the axe and we think, oh boy, here it comes. It's going to be one of those kind of meetings. The, the word that he uses for this word, reports, the reports that were about Paul, was a different word than exegemi. It was kachio, like, you know, gazuntite, right? <laughs> <laughs> to sound toward, to sound down upon, to resound or to charm with resounding sound, to fascinate by word of mouth. Now, I don't know about you, but this doesn't sound like they're glorifying God. When, they, when these Jews are reporting, making reports to the elders, like we're hearing about, about Paul and all the reports that, are, that we're giving are saying he's teaching people not to obey the law of, of Moses. 
So Paul came to give a report and then found out there were reports about him being made. Resounding sounds, fascinating, you know, the, the ears of the elders trying to change their mind about all the good things that Paul was doing, the, the massive work that he was doing with the help of God and only the Holy Spirit to see lives change. These Gentiles who believed in other gods were now serving the one true God. That's where they should have been praising instead of focusing on, on, the, on the, the religious act of circumcision. You see, the elders were trying to appease these thousands of Jewish believers in their little mega church that they had going on in Jerusalem with thousands of new Jewish believers. The only thing that they're concerned about was circumcision. Paul did teach the Gentiles that they didn't have to circumcise their children. The Bible teaches us that it's not circumcision of the flesh that matters anything. It's circumcision of the heart, cutting away the old and accepting the brand new heart that God has given his believers. Acts chapter 15, the elders already made a decision at the end of this last passage that we just read. We see them recounting, saying, yeah, we already told them that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols and blood and the meat string. You know, don't be a, a hang-up to your Jewish brothers and sisters. But they're getting hung up on this idea of circumcision. They already agreed that it didn't matter. So Paul was teaching this. So my question to you here today is, so were James and the elders, the leaders of the church, were they wrong? Were they being bad leaders at this point, swayed by men? More concerned about how their appearance was rather than the good things that Paul had done? You see, after Paul reported to these leaders, he got directions about the next things to do, actions that he needed to perform from those leaders. Verse 23 said, so do what we tell you. The great apostle Paul, with all the churches that he planted, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, traveled around the world preaching. He endured through persecution and hardship and shipwrecks and beatings. But this passage shows his heart that he was submitted to his leaders, his elders. This word elders in the Greek is the word presbyteros. It's where we, the Presbyterians get the name for their denomination. They believe they're the leaders of the whole church or whatever. But following leadership is a biblical example. You see, even though um, there had already been about a debate about this, about not requiring Gentiles to be circum circumcised, Paul still followed them, heart and soul. He did the very things that they asked him to do. Many of you here today, if you find out that your, your, your leaders are, are, are acting in the wrong way, all of a sudden you shut off their influence in your life. Many times we don't understand the full ramifications about the decisions that are being made. You see, they had a mess in their hands. They had a thousand be uh, Jewish believers that were stuck in the old ways and they were trying to probably bring them you know, through everything. And Paul understood how hard and tenuous it was to be a leader. And so rather than push back, he just flowed. That's a key word in Christianity, just flowing. You see, Paul took the same stance as King David. I am not going to be you know, pushed back against the Lord's anointed. I'm just going to do and fall in line with what they tell me to do, believing that they're hearing from God about my life. Let's go on and read in verse 26 to 29. It says, The next day Paul took the men and purified himself among with them. So he did what they asked him to do. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end and the offering would be made for each of them. When the seven days were nearly over, some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul at the temple. They stirred up the whole crowd and seized them, shouting, Fellow Israelites, help us. This is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people and the law and this place. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled his holy place. They had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, in the city with Paul and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple. You see, not every report, it's not based in truth. If it's not based in truth, who's the father of all lies? See. These people that had gathered together, here Paul shows up at the temple to do what his leaders had told him, and now everything is starting to turn on him. The tides are changing, the winds are changing, and now Paul is probably starting to sweat. Mm -hmm. If we keep reading right here, it says in verse 30, the whole city was aroused and the people came running from all directions, seizing Paul. They dragged him from the temple. Immediately the gates were shut. No way of escape. Gates were shut. And while they were, while they were trying to kill him, 
News reached the commander of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. And he at once took some of the officers and soldiers and ran down into the crowd. And when the rioters saw the commanders and his soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Uh, Paul was getting a beat down. Huh? Right here, there's another word that's used. The word it says, news reached the commander. Here's another word that is translated in some places. Whoops. Here's another place that, that is translated as report in the Greek, phasis. The exposure of informing against those who have embezzled the property of the state or violating the laws or defrauding their government. You see what's happening here? Paul, on the word of his leaders, goes down into this temple and a riot breaks out. And not only a riot, a mob, they start beat, they rush at him, start beating him down because, and somebody goes and, and gets the, the Romans involved with this kind of news, with this kind of report. They spread another kind of report saying, this guy is the descender, he's embezzled from the state, he's violated the laws, he's defrauded the government, you need to come down and take this man. Sometimes when we're following God, things go from bad to worse. And, and it leaves us in that place of wondering, what in the H-E double hockey sticks is going on? Where did this come from? I, I'm just trying to follow God here, and here I am getting a beat down in my life. This seemed to be, you know, normal for Paul. It's the new norm. Just like the COVID, it seems to be the new norm for us. You know, there's things going on that are out of our control, that we've got no, you know, nothing what to do. And the only thing we can do is follow God. Yep. But I imagine the temptation was there to say, look what the elders got me into. James, man. I try to make a simple report. I got people talking about me while I'm not here to defend myself. And I obey them and go to the temple and reports are made about me that I'm violating laws to Rome. And now everybody's trying to kill me. I'm leaving this church. They can't make any good decisions around here. Are they even hearing from the Lord? I got a beat down right now because of them. Man, it's going to take days for these welts and these, these bruises to go away. And I know right now I'm speaking to some of you. Listen, some of you have, have suffered at the bad mistakes of your leaders. You put, but you put yourself in a place of judge, jury, and executioner. Every time you examine your leader's decisions and motives, and then make decisions based on how well that you think that they lead. Somebody right now is being tempted to turn off the stream right now. Don't do it. You need this teaching. You may think, I answer to God. Humans are made up leadership structures trying to control the masses, trying to control the people. I just want to tell you, danger, Will Robinson. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. It says, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account or must give a report. Do this so that their work will be a joy and not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. I'm just going to leave this scripture up here for a minute for you to soak it in. Are you confident of your leaders in submitting to their authority? Some of you might think that submission is a bad word, but it's not. Listen, leaders are God appointed. They keep watch over you and they got to give an account. They got to give a report. They're going to stand before God on how they led you, the things that they asked you to do. Were they hearing from the Holy Spirit when they gave you direction for your life? He's asking you to do this so your work will be a, their work will be a joy and not a burden. For that would be no benefit for you. You know, they're, they're there. You know, God gave the apex to the church. The apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers to equip you, to build you up. Yeah, James and the elders were, were all for Paul. They weren't against Paul. They weren't sending him into this knowing. They were listening to the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to read it, but Romans 13, 1 to 7 says that God institutes all leaders. All leaders come from God. And Daniel 20, 2, 21 says that he raises up kings and he sits them down. He raises up and deposes others. Let's look at John 19, verse 10 to 11. If I can get there. This is Jesus in his last moments on earth. And he's in front of Pilate. 
Pontius Pilate. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize I have the power either to free you or to crucify you? And Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. What does this teach me? That all authority comes from God. All leadership comes from God. Good and bad. If you're not submitting under your leadership, then you're open for attack. Your covering is gone. The minute that you resist, grumble, disobey, you take yourself out from under their covering and open yourself up to an attack from the enemy and lessen your spiritual authority. Let's look at authority and in, in where it comes to leadership here for just a minute. Luke chapter 7. This isn't advancing the way I thought it would here. Okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Luke chapter 7, verse 6 to 9. It says, Jesus was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself. I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. So listen. Here as the centurion approached Paul and said, my servant is sick. He came and said, I'm not even worthy to, come under your, to have you come under my house. But I understand how authority works. I give an account to somebody else and there's other people who report to me. And I tell this one, go, and he's got to go. And so all you need to do is send the word. All you need to do, you're filled with authority. All you need to do is send the word. Can I tell you that there's a chain of command even in Jesus' life? He said, he said, I only do the things I see my father doing. He listened to his father. Him and his father were one, but his authority came from the father. Jesus' authority came from the father. And he said to the spirits, go and do this and do that. He understood what it meant to be in the chain of command. And let me say this. You will only have as much of authority as you are submitted to authority, good or bad. Let me say that again. You're only going to have as much authority, spiritual authority in your life, as, as you are submitted to authority yourself. Yes, your authority comes from Jesus, but it thro flows through his ordained structure. Can I get back to this here, Psalm? It's just not going to go any further. Something's goofed up. All right, I'm going to just turn it off then. It's all right. Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. You know what, what it says. It says, how good and pleasant it are when, when brothers dwell together in unity. It's like the dew on Mount Hermon. It's like the anointing that is poured down over the head of Aaron and flows down his robe. You see, this was written by King David, who understood the chain of command, who understood where his authority, where his anointing came from. As he was submitted under God and in looking to the, to the, the, the priest to looking to the, 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 the instituted organization that God had set up, he knew that the anointing came down from God over Aaron and down the robes and then finally to him. So all the authority that he had a king, as king only came from heaven. But he understood the chain of command. You see, Paul understood that his authority came through unity with his leaders. And as we continue reading on, Acts chapter 21, verse 33 to 36 it says the commander came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. Then he asked who he was and what he had done. Someone in the crowd shouted one thing and some another thing. See, they couldn't even get their facts straight. And since the commander could not get the truth because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. When Paul reached the steps, the violence of the mob was so great that he had to be carried out by the soldiers. The crowd kept, that, that followed him kept shouting, get rid of him. You see, as Paul was obedient to his leaders, it carried him into this place. But if you remember back what was leading up to this in Acts chapter 21, the first, first 13 verses, the prophet Agabus told him what was going to happen when we got to Jerusalem. And so if he wouldn't have been following his leaders, he wouldn't have got to this place where the fulfillment of the prophecy came to pass. See, it was 
it could be taken that, that, that the leaders of, of Israel got it wrong, that the elders and that James had got it wrong. But if he wouldn't have followed their lead, if he wouldn't have followed their advice to go and present himself down here, he wouldn't have ended up here. Listen, following your leaders will lead you to the place that God wants you to be. You will not up, end up in God's desired place for your life without your leader's input, period. God places people in churches. He places them in, in ministry. And he, he, he sets up, you know, God-appointed leadership for your good. Right now, pride, is, pride again is rising up in some of your hearts. You need to overcome it. You don't understand, Pastor. My leader's decision caused me serious pain and set back the kingdom. Are you better than Paul? Paul was one of the greatest leaders, yet he was submitted to the leadership that God had over him. Amen. Listen. I've been a, a pastor now. I've been in ministry for over 30 years, a senior pastor for 10, and almost 20 of those ha have been leading ministries in, in some sort of pastoral role. And I've, I've suffered you know, serious pain brought about, brought, sometimes brought about by, by leadership that was in my life. But I would not be where I am at right now with the influence that I have and the spiritual authority that I have when I walk into a room. Demons shudder. And that's not a pride thing. It's because a spiritual authority comes from being submitted and surrendered. Amen. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And as your leader right now, I'm going to make some mistakes. But I'm not against you. I'm for you. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit and praying for each of you daily. I pray for the people who come to our church, who, who log on to our church. I pray for you daily. And I'm not going to lead you down a, 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 on a path that's going to cause you pain, you know, with any kind of malintent in my heart. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes our path is just a path of pain. But in order to get there, we've got to be in line with what our leadership is telling us and asking us to do. Sometimes you need to give a report of what God is doing so you can give, do the next thing that is, is in your assignment. So what can we learn from these passages about submission to our leadership? Leadership, number one, is God-ordained. He gave the, the church leadership as a gift to build you up, to allow you to reach your potential so that you'll end up in the place of God's will where you can make a difference in the kingdom. Number two is submission isn't a dirty word. There's a structure in everything down to family. Ask my wife about it. Submission is not a dirty word. She is able with my covering to reach her potential. And, you know, as she submits to me, she's able to do even more. She's under a covering. And I don't hold her back. I don't lord over people. If you've got leaders around that are lording over you, maybe that's who God put you under for a purpose. But you can't move until God tells you to move. And it's confirmed. Number three, obedience isn't really obedience if you're fault-finding, grumbling, or complaining. That's right. Come on. Number four, following your leader's direction will help position you to stay in God's will. And yes, sometimes you may end up facing some, some consequences, but those consequences weren't from your leader. They were from God, he, the things that he allowed into your life. You see, if Paul wouldn't have been brought into these circumstances that he, that he was allowed to go into this mob, you know, he wouldn't have ended up getting to Rome. And that was the place of his, of his, of his, um, of his passion. It was the place where God ordained him. It was the place where he was going to be productive and effective, where he was going to write the, the letters to the churches. Following your leaders are going to help position you to stay in God's will. And number five, authority flows from being under authority. If you want to walk in authority, church, if you want to walk with spiritual power and authority over all the kingdom of darkness, yes, you have every promise. You can use God's word, but it flows from your direct relationship to your leaders. Just like it did with Jesus, just like it did with Paul. And here today, I want to counsel you. Stay under the place that God has you here today. Don't run. When under the, one, of my, one of my pastors used to always say, when under the gun, don't run. Press in. Press into Jesus. Work it out with your leaders. Talk about things. Your leaders are going to be open to talk. When you feel like they're making a mistake, you know, instead of just running, instead of disqualifying their leadership, talk about it. Learn from Paul's Paul's example here. 
He would tell you the same thing. God appointed James. Sure, I've, I've done all this other stuff, but God appointed James over my life and I've got to give an account. I've got to give a report to him, a detailed report before I can receive my next assignment. Do you want to advance in the kingdom of heaven? Do you want king, the God's kingdom to advance into your family? Then stay submitted under leadership. I'm not telling you that because I want to, I want to you know, tell you what to do. I want to help you reach your potential in Christ. And right now what I'd like you to do is to, wherever you're at, to find a place to kneel in your house. Don't just sit in your chair. Don't just tuck back in your couch. I want to find, ask you to find a place where you can work it out with God right now. Because I can guarantee you, if you've served Jesus for any given amount of time, you've had a disagreement with the way your leaders have done things. You've had a disagreement about how things have worked out. And you've questioned whether they're hearing from God for your life or not. Whether they care about you or not. Whether, you know, you're just a side note or somebody that just shows up to put a check in the offering basket. And let me tell you that that's the furthest thing from the truth. They're praying for you. They're, they're hoping that you'll reach your potential. They're, sometimes they're waiting for God to work some things out in their life. Some things that they see that, that could be holding you back or they're going to trip you up. But what I want to ask you right now is if you've had those negative thoughts about your leaders, if you've had those, those places where you found yourself out of line, out of un- being underneath their covering, out of you know, the, the place where God has you, I want to take and ask you right now to find a place and to work it out with God and repent. And then for you to take it the next step and to realign yourself and watch how God flows. Watch how God starts to use your life. And would you do me a favor right now? Would you tag, you know, yourself in this post so I can be praying for you? Would you, would you say, you know what? I want to follow the cross. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow my leaders. I know that God has appointed them and that they are taking us someplace. If you've been struggling and resisting and grumbling and complaining, I want to ask you right now in your time of place and prayer to repent. To give Jesus that place of lordship in your life by submitting under the leadership that he's designed. And I want to pray for you right now. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, I pray for those who are tuned in right now. And I pray for myself. I've been in seasons where I've disqualified my leaders because I perceived that they were making mistakes. And certainly some of them were. But God, you were still, they were still the ones that you had me under. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if I wouldn't have resolved this. But I thank you for, for the way that you tune us up, the way that you correct us like a father, that you discipline your children in love. And you, we, we, we know that that whole picture is a picture of submission under authority. That you are our heavenly father. And yes, Sometimes correction has to come, but it shouldn't disqualify, Lord, your voice or their voice from our life. And so I pray right now, God, for every believer, Lord, that comes across this, this message right now. Help them to align their report. People that reported about Paul and, and that they were all off. Only Paul's report here about the good things that you were doing took any precedence, this exegesis, Lord God, this exegemi. I pray right now, God, that you'd help our lips to be filled with good reports and not negative ones, not ones that are filled with half-truths or false news. So in Jesus' name, I pray, God, that you would break off that spirit of rebellion, the spirit of grumbling and complaining. God, your word says in the Psalms that we shouldn't be like a horse that needs to have a bit and bridle near to come, to come near you. It's an authority thing. It's a submission thing. We come to you with our hearts wide open, willing to humble ourselves, willing to surrender, willing to follow the direction that you have for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.